well, that's a bit weird. I left this place four months ago, quitting my job, quitting my home. And now I'm back in front of my house. Four months of blissful van life. I really enjoyed my time, but unfortunately, our alternator problems, engine problems, uh, and I'm back here. And I remember when I left here, it was called dark and damp. And guess what? It's still cold, damp and wet. I hope my home is still OK and I will feel at home again for a while while I regroup and re-energize and get the van uh, back to running smoothly. And then I'll be out of here again, I hope. Let's see. It is my life. Okay, um, where do I begin? Well, first of all, I'm keeping my jacket on because uh, <laughs> it's very cold in here. And to be quite honest, after a whole winter, it's also damp. I'm not really sure how that happened, but uh, I need to look into that. But, okay, where do I start? I could, um, I could be very clickbaity and sort of say like, this is my last video. And it probably is, and it actually is, but don't get me wrong. You know, when I started my YouTube channel, um, YouTube asked me if I wanted to create playlists. So I created a playlist which is called Van Life, The Beginning. And now, since I've just come back home, I think that first chapter, The Beginning, has now finished. <laughs> I find myself a bit with mixed feelings. Of course, I'm happy to be home. You know, all my modern comforts. Um, let's have a look. Let's see if that works. Alexa, wie spät ist es? Es ist 14 Uhr 15. You see, he's still there. I like my modern comforts. So let's be honest here. I'll, I'll, I enjoy catching up on my movies and, uh, you know, seeing my family and my friends, catching up on a couple of birthdays that I missed hey, my own birthday coming up. So uh, in that respect, I'm totally happy being here. On the other hand, I kind of feel like a bit of a failure since this, um, my van life, you know, quitting your job and getting out there and never coming back. That plan didn't quite work out. So in that respect, I feel a bit of a, well, failure is a big word, but I, I feel rather disappointed to be quite honest. Uh, why am I holding this now? <laughs> um, yes. Um, yeah, when you go away, you, you still have a home address and people still find you for I'm, uh, bills. Apparently, I have a secret admirer because I got a Valentine's uh, card while I was away. I'll read that in a minute. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, bills need to be paid, apparently, which brings me back to the question, what kind of a van lifer am I? Now, I need to backtrack a bit, really, because maybe you just uh, stumbled across my channel here and I'm blurting out my whole uh, life in front of you and you, you need to catch up a bit. So now for you who have already been here, no worries. I just keep it short and thank you for coming back. And for you, uh, who are new to this channel, I'll give you a little recap. Um, my name is Jack and I have a van, a Ford Transit called Dean. And I quit my teaching job last year and let's say around the Christmas period last year, I ventured out into the world never to come back. And then I had some alternator engine problems with my van along the way in Spain. 
And since I don't speak Spanish that well, I found it very difficult to get to the bottom of the problem of my van. So I decided to come back home where I speak at least the lingo and where I can speak to a mechanic, you know, and understand when he's explaining something to me or when they want to, you know, ask me a question. <laughs> so that's why I kind of put a stop or a hold or a break or a pause, I don't know what you call it, on my van life and I came back home. Like I said, I mean, you know, combining the, you know, the useful and the positive with, uh, you know, that little uh, problem that I had along the road. So nothing to worry about. I'm going to, just going to chill here, spend my Easter, uh, see the family, have my birthday, hopefully finding a good mechanic that can get to the bottom of the problem that my van has, because I'm still not sure what the problem is. And once that all sorted out, I can start traveling again. Now, like I said, um, bills, 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 they keep on pouring in, let's be honest. Um, so for the time being, I might have to consider, it's an option, I might have to consider returning to teaching as a substitute teacher, maybe, just to get the funds back flowing again. And, and after the Easter break, to be quite honest, the school year uh, over here isn't that long anymore. It'll be to the end of June, to the summer recess. So that would be an option to just find a part-time teaching job and still try and combine it with van life. There must be ways of doing that. So I will look into that and I will keep you informed. That will mean that maybe the bigger trips, the, you know, I wanted to go to Scandinavia as well, you know, all the way from Spain, all the way up to Scandinavia. That sounded like a really, really nice trip. So for the time being, I might have to do local trips. Hey, but you know, being in Belgium, you have a Holland half an hour's drive away. I've got Germany an hour's drive away, Luxembourg, an hour's drive away, France, two hours, England, well, if I take the channel, it'll be an hour and a half. So I've got about five, five countries which I can reach in a couple of hours. So I can combine the teaching with the van life as well. So I'm not really worried about it. It's just I need to make a decision. Now, here I am mumbling on and, and all that without my traditional coffee. So I'm going to make myself a nice cup of coffee and then heat up the place so that it'll be a bit nicer. In the meantime, I still have stuff that I need to show you. Like last week, I left you in Girona. I think it was Girona, wasn't it? In Spain. And then I finally crossed the border into France and then uh, moved uh, up North Luxembourg and Belgium. So I've still got a couple of things to show you, especially uh, a little update on the alternator yet again. I think I need to make a playlist just about the alternator because it's becoming the star of my show. Um, so, so what I'm going to tell you is I'm going to show you last week, picture this, I'm waking up in a beautiful sun-kissed cornfield somewhere in the south of France. Let's pick it up there. I make myself a coffee and I'll see you when I get back. Here I am on a busy motorway, uh, somewhere in between Perpignan and Narbonne in Sijan. Now, this is a very long story and it's still the, um, 
it's still the alternator story. But uh, hopefully it's a good development. I spoke to the guy I bought Dean from and he had replaced the alternator about not two years ago, exactly not two years ago, uh, in Sijon in France. And um, so I gave the garage a ring and explained my situation. And because I speak a bit of French, I could actually explain the situation. I was so happy that they understood me and uh, I understood them if I asked them to speak uh, slowly, lentement, and then I would understand. So what they suggested is this alternator, the old one that they took out, uh, which is defaulted, defected, is broken. We're not really sure, but there's something wrong with it. It still comes under a two-year guarantee or warranty. So they want to have a look at it. And then maybe I get some money back. That would be good. Maybe I get a new alternator as a backup. That would be also good. Anyway, they want to have a look at it. So um, I'm just going to take it in. As you can see, I'm now in France and... Um, Oh, well, there's a big sign behind me. But I'm now in France and the sun ain't no longer there. Oh, I miss Spain already. Anyway, let me sort this out and I'll report back to you. Your destination is on the left. <sighs> oh. Okay. So, uh, this is not a check. This is just some paperwork. Um, well, things in life are never really that easy or straightforward, are they? So, you know, okay, so maybe I was hoping a bit too much. But I've had a lovely conversation with Siverin, as her name was, and she explained it all very slowly and carefully for me, so I understand that. The old alternator, I mean, they as a garage or as, as, as a mechanic, they're like the in-between person as well. They, they order their alternator from a wholesaler as well. So they really don't have any, any say in the matter. So the only thing they can do is take the alternator and send it back to the uh, wholesaler. And they then have to investigate whether there was a fault. And, uh, and then once that's been established, I might get some money back. So. <laughs> Not quite the outcome I was expecting, but hey, at least, you know, it's worth a shot. And I'm in uh, in Sijon, which uh, is a nice little place, but um, I don't really want to stay here. So I asked Severine and there was like a lady customer as well. I sort of said like, well, what's my next move? Because I've just been to Spain, Girona, and, you know, they filmed um, Game of Thrones there. And it was like, you know telling all my thing you know I, I have not been speaking a language for a very long time so it was very nice to just speak French and sort of say like oh Game of Thrones you know and you know what Game of Thrones and French is Game of Thrones anyway so she suggested if I liked uh you know that kind of architecture and that kind of scenery that Avignon would be a nice place to go and visit so you know what I'm just gonna you know Sachet on and go to Avignon and see what it's like and um, do some research in the meantime because I am not sure if that song is a worldwide known song but you know Sur le Pont d'Avignon I think everybody knows that doesn't it so it's actually nice to go and have a look what the pont or what the bridge is all about so that's my next stop and hey one day I will get a new alternator and maybe get some money back. Hey, hope springs eternal. Welcome to Avignon.
So apart from the song Sur le Pont d'Avignon, and by the way, they never danced on the pont or on the bridge, sur le pont. They always danced sous le pont, under the bridge. Uh, that's one of those things that you learn when you Google something, I guess, really. But apart from the famous bridge, and, and I need to point out another thing about the bridge, really, because in the pictures it looks like it's not finished, and actually they finished it. They finished it several times in the uh, between the 11th and the 13th century, but because of wars and because of the tide, the very, very forceful current of the river, um, 21, they were supposed to be 21 archers. Well, they were 21 archers. And like I said, uh, because of tides and wars, they stopped, basically, they stopped rebuilding the bridge. And in the end, we've only got four, which you can visit and pay for. So, which I didn't, so I stayed sous le pont. I stayed under the bridge. <laughs> Now, as for the wall, that's been a UNESCO heritage site for for years now, and it uh, includes the city of popes, because believe it or not, um, Avignon hosted several popes in the 14th uh, century, so it wasn't always the Vatican City, it used to be Avignon, and that's why it's kind of famous too. Place is uh, heating up, and of course, I don't have all the answers. Actually, I have no answers to be quite honest. Now, the idea of the van life that you have, you are in complete control of your schedule of your destination. I think that's kind of a YouTube or an internet fallacy. Of course, you're not completely freedom, as uh, my little detour here now back home has shown me. So don't be fooled. So let's look to the future. Let's see if I can combine my passion of van life with the day-to-day -day routine of paying your bills. Let's see what the future holds. I now have to take my van into a garage to get the problem sorted. And in the meantime, it gives me time to regroup and, um, and maybe finding a way of um, combining my passion for van life with part-time home life as well. Paying the bills, finding a job, 
still having my friends and my family around. So that would be a perfect solution, I guess. Well, the point is, I don't know what the future holds, but I can tell you that the van life bug has bitten me. So I need to find a way of either doing this full time or making it work as a part time lifestyle. In any case, I hope that you join me for the ride. And if you click that little subscribe button and, you know, the like button and all that, it helps my channel. It helps me reach other, out to other people and maybe people can give me advice as well. So if you if you got a tip, please leave it in the comment section. I do read all the comments. Uh, I don't always get to answer all of them, but I will get to them. Now that I'm home, I've got some time as well. So, so I'll get back to you. Trust me on that. One last look at Dean. Looking at Dean, I'm bidding you farewell and I promise to see you next week.